Hi members of the pack, Personal here, welcome to a new League of Legends video. In this video we're going to be talking about why Rio decides to change some of their champions, whether it is in the form of a bath, a nerf, or a rework. Now please keep in mind these are just my thoughts, nothing is official, it's not like I met a Riot employee, put a gun on his head and said hey tell me all your secrets or you're dead, no, just my thoughts, but I think you'll find them interesting. So let's just start. In order to understand why Rhea decides to change a champion, I think we first need to understand what they seek in a champion. So I think that primarily they seek two things. The first thing is going to be same power level, so that all champions have more or less the same power level. Now the power level will change depending on its stats, de depending on its skills, depending on its interaction with different elements of the game, etc. Now, some examples of these uh, changes, of changes that are motivated by this thought, are the balance changes, changes that modify the cooldown a skill has, the damage a skill does, the basic stats of a character, etc. It's pretty straightforward. We'll talk about the problems that this generates later on. So the second thing that they, they seek, and I think this is the most interesting one, and the one that motivates the most uh, strange changes, or the most... Um, the most important ones, the more, the most meaningful, are uh, seeking all champions to have play and counter play uh, opportunities. That means all champions having clear strengths and clear weaknesses. A good example would be linear skill shots, which are skills that have a very clear strength but also a very clear weakness. Like for instance Morgana's Q, or Nidalee's Q, or Ezreal's Q, or Ash's ultimate. Now, those skills are fun for the character that is using it and give him power if they land it. But they are also fun for the enemy and give the enemy power if they are missed or the enemy dodges them. Some examples of changes motivated by this thought are the recent Sherath rework, the fact that they want to rework the melee the carries, or the fact that they want to rework uh, Rengar and Warwick. Sherath, for instance, was a monstrosity in late game. I mean, maybe its power level was balanced because he was not OP, he wasn't almost even used. But in late game, Sherath had a lot of uh, range, a very easy to use stun, and a lot of free magic penetration that made him a threat even for tanks. So basically, he would stun you and kill you before you had any time to react. There was little window for counterplay because the stun was so easy to land and he had massive range and burst damage. The current Sherath has roughly the same amount of power as the old Sherath, but he has a lot of more clear weaknesses. Like for instance, his Q must be charged in order to achieve max range, and his W slows and hits really hard in one spot, but if you avoid that one spot, you receive a lot less damage and are slowed by a lot less. Also, his E is blocked by units, and you can mitigate the, the duration of the stun by getting close to Sherath. Also, his ultimate gives away his position, because the projectiles travel from Sherath to the enemy, and not just from the sky to the enemy. And also, the enemy can see the range of the ultimate, and the ultimate forces Sherath to either stay in that position or waste the charges of the ultimate. In the case of Rengar, his ultimate and his immense burst potential in late game make him a very good assassin that leaves no counterplay opportunity for the enemy carries, and even if the enemy survives the initial burst, he has a slow that can be a snare, and he has tankiness and a self-heal, so yeah. We can also see this problem in skills like Trindamir's W or Warwick Z. Those two skills are skills that are really good at chasing enemies, and if you're the one far ahead, you're gonna be using them a lot, but if you're the one that is behind and you're the one running away, they are not that useful. Same happens with melee AD carries, like Fiora or Master Yi. Fiora and Master Yi currently are characters that jump on the enemy team, if they are ahead, they melt the enemy team, and if they are not, they just die, and they are more cool for the enemy team. But trying to achieve this goal generates some problems, so let's talk about them. Let's start with the first goal. The first goal was trying for all the champions to have the same power level. The first trouble we have with this goal is that knowing the power level of a champion isn't an easy task. Now, the power level of a champion is affected by a lot of factors, like uh, the interaction with different items in-game, with runes, runes and masteries available, interaction with different enemies, with different allies, and not only that, but there, there's something that makes a skill more or less valuable depending on how many people can use that skill. For instance, a Mumu's ultimate is an AoE AP initiation tool. If a Mumu was the only character that had such a skill, that skill would give a ridiculous amount of power level to the character that has it, in this case a Mumu. But because there are other characters that can use it skill, this skill, as uh, Sejuani or Malphite, then the, level, the power level this skill gives is toned down. So yeah, basically there are a lot of factors that can affect the power level of a champion. Another problem we can find when trying to achieve balance in League of Legends through giving all the champions the same power level is that having a high power level or the same power level as other champions doesn't mean that that character is going to be used or is going to be OP. 
One example of this is Gunplank. Gunplank is a champion who in my opinion is pretty strong but he doesn't fit in the current meta and he's not that used despite his power level being high. That's because he has utility but he doesn't have enough utility to be played as a support. He has range damage but he doesn't have enough damage to be played as an EV carry. He has tankiness but not that, tank that much tankiness to be played as a tank nor initiation potential enough to be a true initiator, so he's not used. So now let's go see the problems that the second goal generates. The second goal was for all characters to have play and quarter play mechanics. The main issue I find when Rio tries to achieve this goal is that sometimes the play and quarter play mechanics are not explicit enough, or play mechanics are a lot easier to perform than counter play mechanics. Some examples of this could be uh, Trindamir and Nasus. For instance, Trindamir is a character that has strengths and weaknesses. In the strengths we can find well, the ultimate that makes him invulnerable, uh, and dying rage, uh, free AD, free crit chance, uh, mobility, uh, debuff, um, etc. And in weaknesses we have well, Thorn Mane, Randwin's Omen, denying him form, ganking him a lot, uh, exhaust, ignite in the last two seconds of his ultimate, etc. So the problem is that Trindamir is a high damage character and he is a carry, and then because he's a carry he needs to be focused down. But if you try to counter him and focus him down in the same way that other carries, well you're not going to do much of a thing, especially when he activates his ultimate. So actually countering him requires more knowledge than countering other carries, and I find that that creates some problems within the game. Same happens with Nasus. Nasus is a character that if he does the same as every other top laner, which would be last hit, he gets a lot more powerful. So Nasus's opponent has to take extra risks and try to deny Nasus farm in order for Nasus to not completely overpower him, and one of the most intuitive ways to do that is to try and force Nasus out of the lane through poke, but Nasus is strong against poke because he has a mechanic that gives him a free sustain, which is his passive that gives him free life steal. So countering him requires a deeper knowledge of the game than playing as him, at least at the basic level. Also, there's the thing of hidden power. Now, in the game there's hidden power, like Jarvan's E or Sora's Auras. It's called hidden power, power that exists in there, but it's not explicit. I mean, you can see that Jarvan's standard is in there, but you don't actually see that it's giving an attack speed buff. This generates some problems, I think, in the manner that well, people don't think about countering those mechanics. So maybe there are counters for those mechanics, there are counters for Jarvan's attack speed buff, like, I don't know, Frozen Heart's debuff. But people don't think about it because they don't see the, the play in there, they don't see the power they need to counter, and that generates some problem in my opinion. Well, I guess that's it, that marks the end of the video. I said all I think about why Riot decides to change their champions and the problems the way they change them generate. Okay, so that marks the end of the video. Yeah, see ya!